And welcome back to another uh, episode of the SNG Experience. This is 103. Somewhere we missed one. <laughs> uh, but uh, we're back to work on the robot. Where is he? There he is. And uh, I'm actually going to start working on this again. Now, I've been working on Lightwave a bunch, and uh, I'm also doing some work on this. This is my, uh, you've seen this fly, it's 15, almost 16 years old now. And uh, I have been taking off the old decals, you can see where they were. There was one over here. Uh, and I'm taking them off and I'm making new ones for it. And I'm also gonna, uh, going to take these off later today when I get a chance. Uh, and extend them the way the actual uh, inboard engine and the cells were and they went all the way back underneath here through the gear and, and a little, and a little uh, taper out here and over the top. We have to do that because we're going to install electric retracts in, in the model. There's the nose wheel, these are the main gear and after all these years it's finally going to get the technology. Now, the only other thing I could have done a long time ago was to use pneumatics and, you know, basically you pump up air and it kicks them down and it pulls them back up and, you know, it only can do it a few times and it, you had a big uh, air canister in there, another servo to operate that and a whole bunch of the stuff, which really wasn't that practical in this model. But now that technology, 15 years later, has caught up with us, we've got these compact little uh, all-in-one retractable landing gear that have a motor in here and a worm drive that opens and closes these and they actually sound like the real thing and they move slowly like the real thing so it's pretty neat and they're very inexpensive by comparison to what they used to be so those are going to go into into this as well uh, we're going to remove this uh, aluminum tape here and I'm going to uh, use a special paint paint this whole thing to look right. You notice there's an interior there. It's kind of hard to see, but I made an interior uh, a long time ago, so I want to kind of clean all that up and basically give this plane a refit. It's going to be really cool. So, but first, back to the robot. That's what I'm going to be doing. And uh, we're going to start by uh, cutting this out here, and we're going to add in the neck area in the him that's missing. And if I come all the way around here, uh, still got hands coming. We're going to be building. Whew, tells you how long it's been. This should be interesting. So with a little bit of hacking and hewing, I've got this temporarily in place. And you can see how it drops down there. There's a big lip that has to go inside of here and down into here and all down here. And this will all be done tomorrow. I gotta pick up some wood, uh, some base wood, uh, and do the strips to go over this. Uh, do the, uh, this will be done on uh, styrene down in here and lock all this in. This will be really, really strong. Uh, the head's sitting a bit low right now. I did hinge the jaw so that it can actually uh, slide up and, and uh, close if he wants because uh, this is how it really works it slides up and down like that that's how he closes but then when he's talking it's like this Superman you know it, uh, you might be wondering if you're trying to make one of these yourself why can't I get the mouth to close because it actually uh, slides up like this so there's a slot in there, and you can see it in the actual uh, movie if you're watching it. So good progress on this. Uh, tomorrow we'll finalize all this, get these uh, strips in here, and all this built up around here. And then I'm going to pull mold off of just this area here. Well, here we are at the studio. It's Friday. There hasn't been a lot to show you this week. Sorry. There's a nice Enterprise behind me. <laughs> You've seen that before. Yeah, yeah, I always love that ship. I think I always will. They can bury me with it. No, actually, when I croak, somebody's going to get that. But you'll find out when I, when I croak. <laughs> so, uh, I am working on But Something Is There. And it's not that interesting, really. But you can see that there are some buildings back there. 
uh, or the, the shapes. And that's an alpha layer. Uh, these are PNG 32s, and these will eventually be behind mountains and sticking up over them in the background of a scene that we did with uh, uh, Jeff. Uh, I'll put it up for you. I will. Um, as soon as Premiere loads up, which it's working on doing here, and it's going to be a little slower because I'm multi-threading right now. Uh, It'll be here. Usually, when I'm not running Lightwave 2, this thing comes right up. Bink. Okay, here we go. So, uh, we'll put this up. Dink, dink, dink. Okay, here we go. Isn't it exciting? And you see this here. Uh, this is a scene that we shot uh, up in Ojai. Uh, it's on full resolution right now, which I bet while I'm rendering will not run very smoothly. So, I'll put it on 1.8. And um, this is the shot. Okay. Go, John. Now, as you can tell, we're on a crane. And as this shot comes up, those structures you saw will be seen in the background over the tops of these uh, mountains. There'll be some other structures in here, too, that are not seen. It's our crane shot for the opening shot in the show. So that's one of the things that I'm working on uh, among many effect shots that I have to do. And in fact, uh, this is another one right here, uh, which is pretty interesting, uh, which involves a makeup. I don't know if it'll play or not. It's on full resolution, so I doubt it. So we'll stop in here. Uh, let's see. Edit, edit, edit. Evidently, it's a single frame, so that's why that's not working. Here we go. Yeah, I'll show you a little tiny bit. Okay, you can play in time now. Now there will be all kinds of buildings and weird structures and stuff at the back of this strange looking creature as well uh, in, in the scene. So, um, and that's why I'm going to show you that. So. If I even show you that much when I edit this, uh, what else do I have going on? Uh, well, you can kind of look at my face. Uh, as you know, I have this lovely B29, and uh, I'm still working on the uh, extension of the nacelle to make it actually enclose our tires. As you can see, they just fit, and there's the retract, and that just fits in there, and I got to finish planking that, and then graduate it down to here and make a mold off this whole thing and make out of epoxy fiberglass. Over here, I've been working on the robot, of course, and uh, I'm, what I'm doing is getting this whole area done in here. What I'm about to do is lave uh, this ring around here that goes at his base, which is what I'm going to do next for something really fun to do. So, uh, and of course, I've got my decals, which I'm going to print out. This is a test print and try applying some of those. And that's pretty much it. Uh, also, I have to start my Z while it's still running. And because uh, even though it's got a brand new battery in it, it really needs to uh, be run once in a while. And I have not had time to drive this beautiful thing as I pull the car cover off. Uh, I know you guys have seen it before. I don't think you've seen it on video. So as long as I'm gonna open the garage door up and run its engine, I might as well let you see it. So. Uh, it's a pretty car. 1985. I had it completely restored last year, inside and out. So it looks. It didn't look this good when it was brand new. And I'm the second owner of this car. Um, I think it's on. Nope, it's locked. But you can see in there the interior is entirely new again. Anyway, so that's that's what I'm doing. I'm here all by myself. Mary's gone. She's. Uh, 
at a hair appointment. Uh, no uh, interns here. Isaac had to go home. So it's just me and the dogs. There's dog number one. And dog number two is, where is she? Probably in her usual spot. Uh, yes, the beanbag chair. So, uh, I'm going to do a little more work and then show you that. And uh, that's really kind of our video for the week. Well, welcome back everyone. Uh, we're uh, at home on a Sunday and this video is all over the map but that's okay you're used to it right uh, it's Sunday I'm trying to edit the video and I wanted to add some things that were missing since it's such a short piece this week and that is stuff on the robot and a lot of you don't know or if you do know about my blog you don't go there for some reason I don't know what your aversion is to a blog uh, blogs are, to me are better than Facebook goofbook or whatever thing, or fake book. <laughs> uh, I really don't like Facebook, okay? It's just a personal thing. I don't like it. And uh, I don't like most social media. With my blog, I can post my work. Nothing political, no uh, garbage about uh, you know who and all that kind of thing. Just fun, happy modeling and slot cars and RC boats and submarines and planes and robots and models and Star Trek and all that kind of stuff. So you can go there. Uh, I have in the past posted some science uh, opinions that I have, but I have since removed those. So you are safe. You can go there and just uh, be lost in your own little reality about fun, happy modeling and uh, science fiction and all that kind of stuff. I promise. So it's my blog. It's uh, stevenneal.wordpress.com and you can actually leave comments there uh, if they're nasty I will take them down this is not uh, a, a, a forum a social group this is my front living room and so if you say something nasty goodbye so sorry and I do that to everybody it doesn't matter who you are if you put something up like that if I leave one person's nasty comment up I gotta leave everybody's up so I take them down sue me wait no don't sue me <laughs> So, uh, it's my blog, and uh, here it is. It's a wonderful blog, and I've had it for years. It was Doug Drexler that inspired me, because uh, he had a blog, and uh, Drex Files, which was an excellent blog, and I wish he never took it down, because I don't like Facebook, and having to wade through all those comments, and other people's posts, and everything, to see Doug's work. Now you can just see my work, and as you can see, it just goes on, and on, and on, and on, and on, forever, and has really cool stuff. So. What I wanted to talk about was uh, what I didn't show in the video, and that is our Iron Giant. And as you can see here, what I got done yesterday on Saturday is I started doing uh, these here. We, and none of this is really easy. I got to tell you, this is much harder than building the USS Enterprise. Uh, I had plans to work with. I have nothing like that in this. So getting the geometry correct and getting it to match, like this piece here, matching to this side here uh, you have to do one side first and then mirror the geometry and likewise on getting these to work and what does what works in a in the cartoon CGI world doesn't always work in the practical world so there are some adjustments along the way you have to make which are very slight that only the very critical eyed will notice but basically these spaces are a little too wide and these are a little too wide but once you see it all together and compare it to the actual robot it looks fine this lip here this is all hardwood uh, that I'm going to eventually sand and fill the gaps between uh, there will be a ring that I'm going to lave that goes around here I didn't get a chance to do that yet I'll be using that lathe you see over there to do it or maybe Tom all man Tom's lathe uh, and get this whole area secure because uh, I'm going to make a mold off of this area first so I can make a base plate to mount the head on for display in my office since uh, it'll be a while before I have the whole entire robot built. So that's what I had done on that and I wanted to show you that and those are the decals for my B29 but it's really coming along quite well I think you'll agree. So and uh, also I've got my lovely slot car here, track here I haven't talked much about lately I've been working on it and working on it and yes I go around from here which is my game system and there is the uh, steering wheel down there and there's the yoke down there and my rudder pedals down there and the screen there and I turn around from here and I can grab uh, a controller like this this is a wireless one and I can run a car 
which is really a lot of fun. So, so that's that's my, my favorite Porsche. And over here is my scratch built um, T73 Cooper, which I still haven't finished. This this model really really runs quite well. Pretty fast. It's uh, a lot of fun to run this. It's smooth. It's smooth as glass, and it uh, comes off when you're trying to do this with one hand and drive a car at the same time. Not recommended. Uh, but I love my track. It actually looks better from down here. Try to follow it. I'm going slow so I don't screw up. Lovely fishtail. Until we get down here. Not a very good pass. I'll try this again. This is difficult. I'm trying to watch in the camera. And we flip over. Isn't that great? That's what roll bars weren't for back in the 60s. You see how short the roll bar is. I think the, the driver is supposed to uh, duck. But uh, this, is, this is my track and I'm still working on it. I have all these materials down here that uh, I'm working with and adding more foliage and I'm changing uh, all these pretty soon to better uh, railings uh, to keep uh, cars from going over the edge but I really love having all this in here together so it's really pretty cool so I wanted to show you that uh, hope you enjoyed it and if you haven't uh, if you've always loved racing and uh, didn't like RC cars like I didn't much this is a great way to go. This is a very old sport and it's still very much alive. So here's my decals I printed out and uh, I just put the clear coat uh, this stuff which uh, if you don't know this when you uh, spray uh, it's still tacky I'm hoping to put another coat on pretty soon. When you spray uh, this stuff on it protects the inkjet which is susceptible to water so th these are water slide decals if you slide them off um, you get them wet they're going to bleed on you so that's what this testers uh, decal bonder helps do you know crystal clear Kylon works really well too but this stuff is especially for this so uh, I feel better there's our lady luck our new lady luck and this is probably the most important one that's Mr. Big Dave and that is going on the skipjack Bless his heart, how I miss him. So I got my decals, so they'll be uh, dry enough to water slide on the Monday after a nice long weekend. Uh, long weekend, well long for me when I get two days off. Uh, didn't get to the B29, but I did get to this. As it turned out, my neck wasn't in the right location. I had to relocate that. And it's funny, when you start doing this work, you look at these pictures, which is really all you have to go on, and the actual, the model too, which I have all kinds of pictures and videos on. And what helps you get the geometry right is like, wait a minute, this has to be about six inches across. And so it is, after I did the, the math on it and worked it out. Uh, and so this ring here has to fit inside of that. And this, I'm gonna make this, I didn't get a chance to lathe it. And that sits about, about that far from that after the lip's on, correct. So it turned out this wasn't supposed to have a bend there. And and, uh, and it looked too long, but that's because the ring wasn't on. When I looked at the ring, I went, oh my god, i got to shorten this. So I ended up shortening this, so I get this same space here, and this space the same, and this space the same. And then I realized it's not fitting right, it's not fitting close enough. Well, part of that's the way that uh, this has to be glued down a little bit more, and I have to put the edge on it that goes all the way around, uh, and then the lip. But what I realized looking at video and everything, this is quite deep and it doesn't follow this cut at all. A lot of this is that way. This is very deep and the flatter this lays, then this piece made sense and I could start to get it in at the right angles, which it is now at. Thank goodness. I just have to tweak a little bit that way and bring this out a little bit that way. And then I can make a perfect little edge all the way around it on Monday. And lock this whole thing in and then add these strips, which are going to be the next trick to do. Uh, plus I have to lave this. I need a block of wood to do that. I think my lathe's big enough. So I'll be able to turn that on there and get my nice ring. Whew! So, but, and his head, you know, was not in the right location. Look at it on the side there. 
it's leaning over his shoulder blade, which is here, and that's what I have now. It's, it's absolutely perfect. So I'm very happy with that. And uh, that brings me to the end of this week. I know it wasn't a lot to see, but I am back at the robot, aren't I? So <laughs> uh, there'll be a lot more done in this next week, uh, a lot more fun with it. Thanks, everyone, for all your support. We love you a whole bunch, and we'll see you next week.